What is that? Go ahead, use your imagination and be as creative as you possibly can. If we had more time, I'd go around the room and I'd ask you to share some of your answers. On average, you'd come up with two or three. But if I ask that question in a room full of children, it sounds something like this. Well, that's an Oreo cookie with the cream licked off. It's a bug. It's that dark circle in the center of my eye or a man wearing a top hat. And I'm looking at him from way up on the roof and he's down on the ground. On average, those kids had come up with about 10 things. And it kind of begs the question, what happens to us as we get older? Where does that creativity go? Does it simply atrophy from lack of use? Or do we learn not to be creative? 25 years ago, I walked into a restaurant with my sister-in-law and my nephew. And as we were sitting there, into the restaurant came a bald man. Now, today, you see a lot of guys like this. It's a pretty common hairstyle, right, Chris? But back then, not so much. And Stephen had never seen anybody who looked like this. And so what did Stephen do? At the top of his little lungs with the joy and enthusiasm that only a young child can have, he said, look, mommy, that man has no hair. Everyone in the restaurant turns and looks at Stephen, turns and looks at the bald man, and then looks at my sister-in-law, Karen, who is making herself as small as she can, and she says, Stephen, don't say that. Well, what did Stephen learn? Stephen learned, note to self, do not share amazing discoveries. <laughs> I was in the second grade, and the assignment was to draw a picture of snow. And I was coloring away, and I knocked over the glue that was on the corner of my desk, and, and the paste spread all over the picture. And as I was wiping it off, I realized it was actually kind of cool. And so instead of taking the glue off, I put more on, and I went up to my teacher, and I said, look, I used glue to make snow. That wasn't the assignment. I know, but it's cool, right? That wasn't the assignment. F. 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 Note to self, do not experiment with new materials. And then there was that time I was at a meeting, and everybody was at the meeting, and we were all talking about a problem. And I was pretty new in my job, but I thought to myself, you know what? I have an answer. And I raised my hand, and I said, you know... If we just fix this process over here, that problem will go away. And everyone in the room looked at me, and someone finally said, you don't understand. That's how we do that. We are not going to change that process. OK, um, note to self, do not share suggestions in meetings. And so it goes over and over and over again in our lives. We learn that we are not supposed to be creative. We put those walls up and we take that creativity and we shove it in that box and we close the lid because we do not want it popping out at inopportune moments. But I got to tell you, that's really sad because we need that creative part of who we are. That's where... New businesses come from. That's where real solutions to problems come from. New ideas, new products, new services, and a little bit of fun. And so if you take nothing else away from my presentation today, what I want you to do is commit that when you leave here, you're going to open that box and let a little of that creativity back out. But the truth is, it's not so easy because we're all a little rusty. It's been a while. And so what you need to do is you need to embrace that inner child, who you were before you learned any of those negative lessons. And I'm going to give you three steps that you can use to do just that. Step number one, you got to get comfortable falling down. You know, if you watch a young child learn to walk or learn to ride a bicycle, it looks something like this. Forward, fall, forward, fall, forward, forward, forward. You can't go forward if you don't fall down. We get so afraid of falling down that we stop trying. You know what? 
Not every idea you have is going to be great. Some of them will be glorious failures. That's okay. It is in the falling down and the getting up that you learn what you need to know to be successful next time. So get comfortable falling down. The second thing is you got to embrace the new. Young children explode out of their beds in the morning. Why? Because they know the day is filled with amazing and wonderful and new things. And they can't wait to find out what they're going to be. And then we get older, and let's face it, there ain't as much new unless you go looking for it. And that's what you need to do. You need to get out there and go to the ballet. Go to a fringe play. Go down to First Friday and go to the Murphy Arts Building. Go to an art exhibit. Or drive halfway across town to a restaurant you've never been to before and order something on the menu you can't pronounce. <laughs> Feed that creativity. And the third thing that you need is a supportive adult. Someone who will tell you that it's okay, that your ideas aren't crazy. When I came home from school that day, my Uncle Max was visiting. And he saw that I was upset, and he asked me about it. And I showed him my picture. And as he took the picture from me and he smoothed out the edges, which wasn't that easy to do because the glue was making it curl, but he smoothed out the edges and he said, oh no, Lainey, your teacher was wrong. This is amazing. Really? How clever of you. How smart to use the glue. I'll bet nobody else in your class thought of that. <laughs> no, they didn't. And I took that picture, and I went into my room, and I hung it on my wall. And I felt better because I believed. And he believed in me. You've got to have people that will cheer you on. When I started my business, my friend Tony and I would talk almost every day. We would bullshit and we would brainstorm and we would argue. Those of you that know Tony know that we would argue a lot. But every now and then, the conversation would start like this. I have this crazy idea. And that was code for just shut up and listen. There'll be plenty of time later to tell me why it won't work or ask the hard questions and help me think through it. But let me just get the idea out there. And 14 years later, as I look at my business and at the company that he started, I can see the remnants of some of those ideas in our successful businesses. You can do this. You can re-engage your child. Get comfortable falling down. Don't be afraid to try new things. You won't like all of them. That's OK. We won't like all your crazy ideas. That's OK, too. And find someone who will listen to you, who will just let you get those ideas out there. And in return, you need to do that for someone else. You need to, particularly for young professionals that you're working with, hear their crazy ideas. And even if inside your head you're screaming, oh my god, no, don't do that, shut up and listen. Because just because it didn't work for you doesn't mean it won't work for them. Maybe they're smarter. Maybe they have a better way to do it. And if nothing else, the joy and the excitement of listening to other people's ideas, it will energize you and it will feed that inner child, that part of you that needs to be let out. And if you do those things, well, maybe, just maybe, the next time you see a dot like this, you'll be able to imagine the possibilities.